Good day and welcome to this third in our series of videos of what we are sowing this month. So this being the 1st of March, all the seeds I'm going to show you now are seeds that we're sowing in March. Now we do have a polytunnel, so we um, are a little bit warmer than um, many people who might not have a polytunnel. Everything I'm showing you today is either going to be sown outside direct or in the polytunnel. So we'll do we'll do with all the direct sown seeds first. On our site, as you know, we're in London and uh, we are generally sort of above freezing where our polytunnel is. So we can get away with sowing some things a bit earlier than in other parts of the country and in fact in other parts of London as well. What the opportunity of sowing earlier also does is that if the seeds don't take then we can sow them again a month later. So any that don't take in March we can re-sow again in April. So by doing what we're doing we're trying to get a bit ahead of the game. So first of all what we're sowing direct Parsnips is something that we adore and um, by later in this month we'll have moved our high bed or our taller bed from the plot that we have vacated to our newly acquired plot directly next to the plot that we've had for four years. One thing we're doing this year that we've never done before is sowing our own save seed. So this is seed that was sown in 2018 most of the parsnips were therefore harvested in 2018 and early 2019 because where we are we can leave them in the ground and also because they're in a tall um, raised bed we don't have to worry too much about the ground freezing because it would only be the top inch of soil in that bed that would normally freeze. So that is going to be moved and we'll be sowing our parsnips into that. Um, we have also been sent some, oh sorry, those are Guernsey Half Long, which is what we grow each year. Mainly sort of, you know, because I come from Guernsey, I like growing Guernsey Half Long. Rene has also sent us some seeds of Guernsey Half Long, so they are our backup Guernsey Half Long seeds. Old Gardener Guy has also sent us some seeds, and I have no idea what how to pronounce these. Jurisbersilja. And I'm not even sure if that is the name or whether that just says parsnip. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. And then Jane Kelly uh, a year ago also sent us some parsnip seeds. They're a uh, white spear, bog standard white spear. So we have a backup for our Guernsey half long and we also have a backup of the white spear. So fingers crossed with those. Right, where's my carrot seeds? I can't see my carrot seeds. Oh, there they are. Carrots, because I've been talking about carrot seeds. We are doing a um, red elephant, which came from the um, Heritage Seed Library. And we're doing Rothfield, which um, is from Unwinds and did really well for us last year. Now, these are going to be going into the um, bed where we had the broad beans that were for autumn harvesting last year, the ones that didn't do really well. So I'm going to be sowing two lines of these. And I think we also have some... Um, what else do we have? I'm missing a carrot. Hold on a second. I'm back. We also have a nonce carrot, which um, I sow really every year because they just do well. We're going to be sowing Autumn King carrots for our late autumn and winter harvest, but they're not going to be sown till June. So those are the carrots we're putting in direct. Other direct sowings are going to be two types of turnip. 
and here we have um, Petrowski and Alvina. These are seeds that we got um, in a magazine and I've not grown them before, but we really do enjoy turnips and um, March is a good time to sow these. So they're going in. Further direct sowing is beetroot. I'm going to be putting in a um, Biatola da Orto, it's Italian, um, and they are basically just the red, bog standard red beetroot. We are also putting, or we're going to be sowing a Devoy beetroot from the Heritage Seed Library. All of these names, by the way, will be in the description below. So if you want to see exactly what we're sowing and how they're spelt, it'll all be below. I'm going to come back to beetroot in a minute because we're going to be sowing some in modules in the polytunnel as well. So I'll come back to those. Kohlrabi. Yeah, we like kohlrabi. But the kohlrabi that we grew last year was really quite bitter, so we um, we didn't really eat it. But kohlrabi is going to go in. This is a purple kohlrabi. Finally, on direct sowing, so I'm just separating my seeds here. We are growing um, quite a few peas this year. Peas is not something that we normally grow. But we were sent some peas, as you may have seen from Kelly of Kelly's Kitchen Garden, um, last month, and they went in last month. So what we're doing this month is we're adding to that. So those were Mange 2 peas. Um, I think they were Oregon Sugar Snap. We are doing Calibra Mange 2 to go in as well. Then. I really can't remember, this is terrible, but I can't remember who sent us these seeds. They're Train Driver Mountain Range and they're a giant pea. So on one side of the bed we're going to have Mange 2 and then on the other side of the bed we're going to have um, General Peas and there's a few varieties that we've been sent. Um, Hurst Green Shaft will be the main, main pea that we're sowing. But Mountain Range is going in. From Christina, thank you very much Christina, we also received two heritage varieties, or I don't think they're classed as heritage, but they're, they're um, old varieties. Um, one is Fairbeard's Champion of England, which is an old Kentish variety, and the other is um, Golden Sweet, which apparently is quite tall, and that's a, an old Indian variety. So those are the, the ones that we're going to be sowing outside and that will fill up one of our 2.4 meter by 1.2 meter beds. So that will be the first bed that we've, we've filled and or sowed fully and have already um, sowed the Mange 2 from last month in. Coming back to beetroot, so that is all everything direct sown. So coming back to beetroot, Christina also sent us some rouge crapodine, that's a good word to say, which apparently is a carrot shaped beetroot. And I'm going to be sowing that in uh, modules in the polytunnel. We're also doing burpees golden, which is, as it says, a golden variety of beetroot. And that is going to be sown again in seed trays in the polytunnel. And then once those have germinated and they've got a nice root system, we'll be planting those out completely. Right, on to seeds that we're going to be sowing in the polytunnel. We've got more brassicas to sow. I've got some um, Red Bull Purple Brussels Sprouts and a Natalino um, uh, broccoli, Calabrese, Natalino Calabrese, and also one called Autumn Calabrese, which is, um, many of you will, will know the varieties, um, not the varieties, this is what we generally call broccoli, it is actually Calabrese, but you very often see it in supermarkets as, as broccoli. 
sticking with sort of green things. You may remember in January we sowed the Broccoli Rave 60 Days and it was a chance really, not because of the it was cold and in the polytunnel, but because it was seed that had really bolted, grown really swiftly and then bolted. Now I sowed the packet that we used last year that bolted and do you know what? It's doing it again. I know we're only, what's that, four weeks on, five 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 weeks from sowing but it's it's already about three inches tall and i'm just going to scrap it and um start a brand new packet of broccoli rave 60 days R worked really well in the first year that we sowed it but in subsequent years it's just not done then um nero di toscana we're sowing which is like a cavolo nero and then a perpetual spinach. Now, I like perpetual spinach rather than spinach. We do have some Madonna, Madania, uh, which we'll sow later in the year. Um, but I really love perpetual spinach because it's, it's perpetual and it just sort of comes and comes and you get big leaves on it. And that's what I really like, big leaves, because picking smaller leaves or spinach is great when it's for a salad, but when it's sort of you want it to, I don't know, make a, a sort of a spinach and feta pie or something like that. You really, you know, bigger leaves for me is, is better. So we're doing that in the polytunnel. Courgette, early sowing of courgette. I've got um, golden zucchini here. I think there are, how many seeds does it say there are in the packet? I don't think it says. Um, I thought it said that there were 10 seeds in there. Um, I think I'll be sowing most probably six of those and seeing how we get on. Then following on really from the leafy side of things, chard um, or leaf beet. So we're doing bright light Swiss chard, which is something we do all the time. And in a magazine, I got this um, rhubarb chard, which is, um, or both of these are beet leaves. So um, yeah. We're growing those, see how they do. A few herbs, mountain tea. We gave our, um, we had some mountain tea seeds and we sowed some, we gave them to Vivi and Vivi's didn't germinate too well. So we only had one plant that came from that mountain tea seed sowing and we gave it to Vivi. Um, so she gave us last year some seeds that she'd been sent of mountain tea. So I'm going to be sowing those this month. And I'm also be going to sow marjoram this month. Now, I love marjoram. I love the plant. I love the smell. But most of all, I love the plow flowers. flowers. And the bees obviously adore marjoram flowers and thyme and things like that. So um, those are our herbs that we're putting in. Thinking about more salady things, we have some French breakfast radish, which are going to be sown direct in the ground outside. So that's breaking out from what I said before. And then inside we have romaine lettuce. We are going to be doing some rockets. You may know we've usually done mizuna before and we have some mizuna plant already coming up. Um, but we're going to do rocket, wild rocket. Um, parsley another sowing of parsley um, champion most curled in this case and then i received this outrageous lettuce outrageous now it's a red lettuce and the reason that they called it outrageous is because it's the first vegetable grown and eaten in space so i'm um, assuming this was uh, grown and eaten on the um, International Space Station. And um, yeah, we'll see if it grows on the ground as well as in space. So just a bit of fun, that one. Right, on to flowers. I'm just looking at, oh, I've got two more things. On to beans next. We were sent some runner beans from Shaz a couple of years ago, and I think we got about um, 10 
beans left in the lovely seed packet. Look at that lovely seed packet. Um, about 10 left in the lovely seed packet that she sent us. And their Scarlet Emperor, they're her own save seeds. We really grow runner beans to keep, um, to dry, and then keep the dried bean or we freeze it demi sec, and then we use it in chilies and things like that in the winter. But I've got some left over, so I'm going to do an early sowing at the end of March into pots in the polytunnel. And then Jackie also sent us some lazy, lazy housewife climbing beans. And we're going to be sowing half of these um, in pots in the poly at the end of March too. We'll do another sowing of them in April again in the polytunnel, but we'll come on to that in April. Right, finally, a few flowers. We've got this beautiful seed packet, a beautiful seed packet from uh, Patricia. Um, thank you very much, Patricia. It's Sweet Pea Just Jenny. She posted this on her Sew and Grow page and also I, I think on our Planet Vegetarian group and it was such a, a beautiful um, plant, such a beautiful flower, that I said, what was it? It was just Jenny and Patricia said she'd send us some seeds. So thank you very much. They will be going in very shortly. Right, some um, Escholosia. It looks pretty. Given that seed, Orange King is sort of a bit poppy like, um, but yeah, it's absolutely lovely. So, um, perfect for pollinators, it says as well. So, that's going to be uh, sown outdoors this month. We are going to be doing some um, corn flour as well, which again is sown outdoors and uh, direct. And then later in the month, we're going to be doing Velvet Queen sunflowers, which we just adore. And we haven't grown Velvet Queen sunflowers for a very long time. In fact, the last time we grew them was in um, the garden here at home. And they were just spectacular. But the squirrels also love them. And they would climb up the, the sunflower stalk, get to the heads, and then the whole thing would just sort of collapse onto the ground. Now, what I also have ready, um, because Nick gave them to us when we saw him at the Malvern Autumn Show, uh, that's Nick from Nick's Allotment Diary, is a selection of other sunflower seeds. Now, these are for Nick's Sunflower Seed Challenge, which he does at the end of March or the beginning of April. So. I have these elsewhere. I didn't have these in Bertie the Box. I had these elsewhere and I grabbed them and I put them into March sowing so that when Nick does sow his, if it's at the end of March, we'll do them at the end of March. But if he does his at the beginning of April, we'll do them in April. Right, so that is all the seeds that we are sowing and um, and obviously peas that we're planting and beans that we're we're planting. What we're also going to be doing this month, and it's going to be a bit later this month, and some will be at the community gardens plot rather than at the allotment, is we're going to be planting out our potatoes. So we are doing uh, four varieties of potatoes this year. We're doing Kestrel, which Richard really likes. We're doing Charlotte, which we haven't done before, um, but we, we both like Charlotte potatoes. We're doing Ulster Prince, which um, Tony at the Little Farmer's Farm suggested to us. Um, and we're also going to be doing Cara as a main crop. So the first ones are earlies, and I think Ulster may be in mid-early, um, and Cara is a main crop. So those are going to be going in. Now, one thing to, um, to always be aware of when you're sowing seeds is what the weather is doing. I've looked ahead to how the weather is for this month and in the second, third and fourth week of this month in our area we dip down at night supposedly to about zero degrees. 
So if we are going to be doing that, even though some of these are in the polytunnel and they'll be under a um, propagator lid, not a heated propagator, but a plastic propagator lid, we may be um, fleecing them over. So do keep an eye on your weather. Now, when I looked at the weather a month ago, it did say that from mid to the third week in February, it was going to get really, really cold right into the second week of March. So maybe that has pushed back or maybe our weather has changed. Certainly the amount of storms that we've had this year have been pretty um, pretty horrendous, really, and the, the, the wind speeds have been very high for the UK and pretty consistent. The other thing to um, mention briefly, and again, this sort of follows on from things getting colder, is I did an experiment, as you may remember, in January that I sowed Marmon tomato seeds and also carrot seeds in modules in the polytunnel. Now, I noticed um, the other day that both Marmond and the carrots have started to germinate and it will be interesting to see how they actually do. Tomatoes we've sown before in January in a little plastic grow house at the side of our house, um, but we've never sown them so early in the polytunnel. So we will see how they do. They may, they may die, they may not, we will see. So yeah, that is it. That's it for what we're sowing in March. It does seem quite a lot, though, as I say, in our area, I think we're hopefully going to get away and uh, get away with the, an early sowing of all of these. If we don't, we have an opportunity to sow again in April because most of these will be up by the time we, or should be up, should be germinated by the time we do our April um, sowing update. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed. I'm pretty happy with with what we're what we're sowing and and how they're going to do. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. OK, so that's it for this month. Thanks very much for watching. Do let us know what you're sowing. Obviously, depending where you are, you may be sowing nothing or you may be sowing as much or just a, a few types of seeds. So let us know in the comments below how um, you're going to be planning your sowings in March. And um, we will see you next month for what we're growing in April, what we're sowing in April, rather. Okay, bye.